How are you feeling? Not well, bitch. How are you feeling? <laughs> Not well. I'm sad as fuck. Because the cruise is over or because the hospitalization? Both. Okay. Emo's not dead. Hmm. But we are. Emo's not dead, but we are. Welcome to Disrespectfully. With Katie Maloney. And Dana Kathan. Unapologetically. We're here to do what we want to do. Spilling the tea. Babe, you're going to see the power of women. Like, disrespectfully. You know, people are like, and actually someone said this to us on the cruise. They were like, you guys look like sisters. And we were like, remember when we were checking in? I thought they were joking. No, I was like, well, and I look nothing like my sister, but it's like how when owners of pets start to look like their pets, you and I obviously are spending so much time together. We're becoming the same person because we were in the same hospital ER 24 hours apart. Yeah. Dana and I both visited the emergency room this weekend, believe it or not. We sure did. On two separate occasions. Who wants to go first? Would you like to share first? We'll have some throat coat. Oh, okay. I'll share. I'll share. So, well, basically last week while we were on the cruise, I was having like some abdominal pains. And I thought it was just because, you know, I'm just a girl. You're just a girl. I'm just a girl. And that happens. Sometimes we are, we have cute stomach pains. And so I just kind of like d- dealt with it. And it, it kind of like went away a little bit for the most part. I don't know. You were a trooper about it. And it was, yeah, it was an ebb and a flow. Like there was one night it was really bad and then you could like kind of get through it. Yeah. And like, listen, we do with period cramps. And so like this just kind of felt like nothing compared to that. But then on Friday when we, when we docked and we went to that spa and I was having like those really bad body aches and mm-hmm. then it turned into like full on flu symptoms. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, this now feels like it's something else. And then it went through Saturday and then Sunday felt pretty good. But then Last night, so Sunday night, the chills and the fever and the sweats came back and that stomach pain came back. I was like, what if I'm ignoring like a bigger picture? So then I started Googling, which is like, you know, exactly what you should do. Correct. And it was like, you know, stomach cancer and appendicitis (laughs) and all these things. But I was like, I have like a lot of stuff coming up and like, I don't, I don't, last thing I wanted to do is become like a real dire, like real emergency situation. Like may as well just go to urgent care just to like, just to see peace of mind, go to urgent care explain my symptoms like go to the emergency room i'm like okay tight 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 because like in case they need to do imaging i'm like okay i get it they give me a list and i was like oh providence that's where dana went last night as if it was like a restaurant as if i was able to pick out a recommendation for a restaurant so i go there dealt with security they had like a metal detector because this is not like and oh, if I was giving them ratings, they'd get four stars because of the security guard when I thought I was having anaphylactic shock. And they were like, well, we still need to see your purse. Please walk through the thing and come back. And I'm yeah. like, can we do this in a minute so I can talk to someone? They searched me. But mm-hmm. I liked it. They had, they had a good like system set up. You know, you go to one window. Well, there, then you the see. Next. in there. Yeah, but just like the whole system. So then, you know, I go in one room, answer all the questions. Then I go another pee in a cup. But then I was like, do I leave in the bathroom? Like, no. I'm like. So I keep it on the, my person. <laughs> so you were just holding your urine. Well, I had to wait, wait till, for the, the blood person to come. Did and they make I, you hold your own blood too? Yes. <laughs> Did you ask them to make me a they necklace me, like a la MGK? They made me draw blood? my own blood too. Mm. <laughs> no, um, no, but it's, I just sat there with my urine in my lap. I did that a few weekends ago too, but just for a different reason. No, I'm kidding. It didn't happen. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> Drew my blood feed my cup and then I went and sat in the waiting room for like an hour until they called me back again and then like you don't know what's happening and then they're like okay come with me we're gonna put you in room 28 you're like am I spending the night like what's happening like they don't really tell you give you a little robe I already have my bracelet on they give you that immediately Très chic. yeah they print they're really efficient with the bracelet they give you the right on they give you the bracelet right away when mm-hmm. you walk in and so then I lay down and they come in and they told me my results and they're like, okay, so basically you have a really bad bladder infection. And I was like, hold on. Um, I'm going to object to that because I'm a frequent flyer of air UTI. I wouldn't know if I had a bladder infection. I, like within an instant, I can feel those symptoms and I'm on that shit. Like I have not felt a single symptom. You're like, I'm comfortable using legal jargon and everyday words. I object. <laughs> and also to be fair, same. You and I are definitely the UTI queens. I've had I had chronic issues with UTIs. And I yeah. think most of our audience is female. And so I'm sure a lot of women out there relate to this as well. Like, you know what the business is. Oh, my you God. can advocate for yourself. I literally the wind, a gust of wind. And I'm like, yep, a UTI is coming. Yeah. No, one. I can, I can predict it. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll dream about it the night before. Like, there's a 30 percent chance that I'm going to get a UTI. Yep. 
So I was just like, oh, that's so weird. They're like, well, all the, this guy was like, all you two guys are different. I was like, not mine, this sir. This guy? Not mine. I'm like, well, I believe that could be medically accurate. I just I might have been consistently the same. This consistent. That's why I'm able to know exactly what's happening. I'm able to self-diagnose every damn time. And that's when I do my telehealth. And that's when they send me a pre prescription and I'm done, you know, in like four days. But like this one apparently just went unnoticed and then spread to my kidney. And now I'm, that's why I'm having all these like abdominal pains. And then they, you know, they swab me for like any kind of like all the viral stuff, COVID, yeah. influenza, flu, all of that as well. Just, you know, they're like, well, you were on a cruise. So like that's just like a Petri dish for like illness and disease you're like you don't gotta tell me i was like I saw I, with my own well, that's what eyes. i said i was like i was on a cruise so i just figured like i just like was exposed to like every disease possible typhoid <laughs> I, well i mean Tuberculosis. I, walked, I mean i already walked in after my google search assuming i was dying i'm like the, the pain the sweating the chills i'm like it's the plague <laughs> i know it yeah you typed your symptoms and they're like victorian child about to die <laughs> <laughs> just like fetal position shaking that was me so I was like, all right, this seems manageable, I guess, because it's just like most of my pain was in my right flank. Mm, um, the flank. Yeah. So they, they hooked me up to an IV with some meds and some antibiotics and some fluids. And I laid there and watched the Food Network channel until about 1 a.m. And then they sent me on my merry way. And now I have some serious pain meds and antibiotics for two weeks. Mm. It's just, you know, pain, discomfort. And, you know, I'm hoping like the other symptoms go away. I woke up um, this morning sweating. I got out of my bed and there was just like, <laughs> just an outline of sweat. I also woke up, I, when we were texting last night, when you told me this information, woke up in a cold sweat. Yeah. Real, real fun stuff. The guy was like, I forgot what he said. He said something to me and I'm like, well, I'm a woman. Meaning, but something about pain management or something. And he's like, oh. And I was like. Oh, yeah. We're out here getting IUDs inserted in us with not even lidocaine. Like, we're just told to suck it up. Basically, I was trying to explain to him I have a, I have a high pain tolerance. So, like, I just, so a lot of things go unchecked or unnoticed half the time. Like, it's not unheard of that I have 800 things going on at one time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like, yeah. especially when you're on your period. I mean, you can have, like, tummy problems, cramps, <laughs> vomiting, <laughs> all these things happening at once. But we're just girls. We're just girls. I mean, I also, again, have all those symptoms when I'm dating in my normal life the other three weeks of the month, I would say. You and I talk about this all the time. We spend <laughs> a week out of every month normal feeling that way, n feeling normal. And then yeah. we get the pre, the post, the during. Yeah, we get one week a month just of bliss. And then the rest of it's shit. We're just girls. And someone's usually ruining our life during that week. So, you know. Yeah. So I was hospitalized in 2020 for a kidney infection. I was telling you this. So this was December of 2020. So it was like peak coming. There was a huge surge. So the hospital was way different. I had to sit outside for like an hour and a half and it was December. It was freezing and I didn't bring the right coat. So all I have to say to that is I completely understand that is so painful. That's mm -hmm. the one and only time I've ever had morphine. They were like, you're, I drink a ton of water and they were like, you're so unbelievably dehydrated. And it was the same thing. Like it just built up and led to that. I did watch Drive Me Crazy. I remember that. They had that on in the hospital. And I was mm -hmm. like, this is lit. Oh, and then it was the night before I got LASIK. And I got LASIK the next day. And the antibiotics they g gave me, that's how I found out I was allergic to cephalexin. So I had an allergic reaction right before LASIK. It was a blast. Sick. Was awesome. Yeah, now I can't drink for two weeks. I feel like I don't want to. Well, I was like, you know, I do need to dry out, but I do a Percocet. So, hey. Do you know what is hey. a, Do you know what's such a bummer about that? <laughs> I can't. I like. I'm jealous because if you need it for pain, I I throw up. Narcotics make me throw up, so I oh. can't, I literally cannot have them. So after like my nose job, I had a broken nose. I Tylenol. Well, I, just I have can't. the I have the stuff that makes you not nauseous. Well, we had an extraordinary week, but we both had a really rough go at it coming back to land. We're on the plane, and we were in Mint. Treated ourselves. We had the lay flats. Couldn't even enjoy it. Couldn't even enjoy it. <laughs> Katie is laid out, passed out, unconscious. I'm face down unconscious <laughs> to the point that the i was corpse. like do we need to check her breathing where's the defibrillator my face was in the pillow and those are gifted to you by the plane so it's if you weren't going to get influenza or typhoid before you sure were on that flight <laughs> so i'm sitting there and i'm like i'm so hot right now and not like oh hansel he's so hot right now like temperature wise i'm like looking like a mouse and gremlin all of the above and i'm really hot so i go to the bathroom 
and I look in the mirror and I'm my cheeks are swollen. My ears are swollen. They're bright red. I have hives all over my shoulders, and my chest, which this happened to me a few years ago. And I still don't know what it was from. Perhaps I should figure it out. I noticed I had started coughing a lot and then wheezing. And I remembered that's because it's like your your throat is so irritated and it shrinks up. And so I came out of the bathroom and I sounded bad. Like when I spoke to the flight attendant, I was like, oh, fuck. And I was like, I'm so sorry. We have two hours left in this flight. I'm actually having an allergic reaction. Does anyone have Benadryl? There was no Benadryl on that plane. They like went around asking people. I was actually really surprised to hear that because you'd think just for in case of emergency, they would keep it. An EpiPen. But perhaps? luckily, the flight attendant had pres- she had like a severe peanut allergy. So she had prescription level Benadryl or whatever it is. So she gave it to me and I'm like, sure, I'll take your random prescription. Now you seem trustworthy. She seemed really cool. So I was like, whatever, fuck it. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe I'll have a good time anyway. And she's like, I might knock you out. And I was like, that's preferred. Slept on the back end and my hives were a lot better when we landed, but I was still like a little wheezy. In addition to that, my gorgeous, hot, amazing, wonderful sister was coming into town for her birthday. And she was already had this trip planned with her best friend, Lisa, who I'm also very close with. And when we had planned to do the cruise and realized there was a conflict, we thought we'd be able to get an earlier flight back. So it was going to match up. So they got into town like, you know, five hours before us. And I was like, okay, I really need to make tomorrow count because I have such little time with them. So we go to brunch. We're celebrating my sister's birthday. We're, you know, making her feel special. And then we go out. I'm super excited about the night. We're, we're going to go to a bar that you and I both love and dance the night away. And we're like getting ready for the night. And I'm like coughing again. And then I looked at my my throat and I had a rash all over my throat. And I was like, mm, not great, but I'm just going to put some concealer on it. I'm just a girl. <laughs> so I put concealer on it. I'm like beauty blending the fuck out of it. And then we're in the car on the way to dinner. And I stopped speaking because it felt like there was an elephant on my chest on top of a forest fire. As we can tell from this podcast, I never shut the fuck up. So it's a it's like a deeply obvious thing when I'm not talking. And like Raleigh turned around the car and was like, what? Why are you so quiet? And I was just like. It's just not feeling great. Let's get some martinis in me and see how it goes. We get to the restaurant and like three fourths of the way through the dinner, I was like wheezing to myself. And I was like, I'm having a little trouble breathing, but my sister's having her birthday thing and whatever. And I completely stopped talking. And then it became like the joke of the dinner. I was like making ha- hand gestures for like, I agree. <laughs> Miming. <laughs> Lisa was like, where's the bathroom? And I was like, flight attendant. Anyway, so I just decided I was like texting with Lisa and Raleigh because I didn't want my sister to know because she's and she was like all worried and freaked out. And I was like, this is your night. Raleigh will take you out. Raleigh was like, I'm going to come with you to the hospital, get you settled in and then come back and meet them. So same thing, went through the metal detectors. I felt like I was going to see Beyonce in concert. They like basically patted me down. By the way, let me paint the picture. I was dressed so slutty because I <laughs> planned on going dancing and doing my normal thing. So like I had cute jeans on with heels and a crop top that barely buttons just like from the front. It's I mean, adorable shirt, but it's a weird feeling being in the emergency room with people in sweats and covered in blankets. Well, I'm sure they see it all there. So, oh, oh, I'm sh- I'm sure they did. But I was just like, I'm just a girl. So anyway, I got checked in, showed them the photos of the plane and like told them what was going on. They're like, yeah, you're definitely having an allergic reaction. So I luckily did not have to stay for very long because they just gave me steroids and we're like you need to go to a specialist so I should probably do that before my next flight how long were you there for an hour it was much quicker than your situation I was there for like five hours I hate that for you anyway let's talk about much more fun things let's talk about emo's not dead cruise I've had this shirt for a long time I just wanted to wear wear something that was on theme obsessed with it (laughs) I had such a good time all things aside we had no idea what to expect Mm -mm. obviously because for one we'd never been on a cruise so like didn't even know what to expect from like arriving at the cruise ship boarding. We were like, how do you cruise? <laughs> how to cruise? How to cruise. WebMD had no answers on that. What do you wear? What if there's inclement weather? <laughs> or, like, what do the rooms look like? None of that. So we were just like blindly in the blind, but like truly was so much fun. It was the most fun I've had in a long time. Mm-hmm. And overall, the experience was amazing. It's like there's so many different things to cover about it, but I will say, Committing to five days of emo music on a boat is very different than us just going to like emo night, which is one night which our bodies already feel wrecked over. I have the most insane bruises all over my legs and possibly shin splints from like trying to jump around and keep the energy going. So that was harder than I thought. And also, obviously, we were like boozing and whatever. I don't have a problem committing to the music for five days. It's just the bed. 
situation. Oh, I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking about the physically. So yeah, let's the, talk about the best. Oh, the, yeah, the physical is, is hard. Because, I mean, it's the same thing as like a festival because it's like, you know, you want to do as much as possible and see as much as possible. I like that it is sort of like, you know, it's the same bands and they all play pretty much every day. So if you don't see a band their first time, you can see them again another time. And they almost play the same set. Some of them are playing acoustic set, some are not, I don't know. But, you know, there's so there's not a ton of pressure to like, go to every single thing, which I, I like that. So it wasn't like there was something new where you had to be up at dawn and awake all night. So it was a little, it was more conducive to an altered <laughs> ground in that sense, where it could be slightly more leisure. But this is what we didn't know, right, going into it. The beds on this cruise ship, we were so uncomfortable. They were twin slabs of a suggestion of a feather. They were lawn cushions. The <laughs> called up whatever mattress slumlord they got this from. They're like, hey, can we get the joints with the extra springs? Extra springs, as little padding as possible. When I laid on my side, it hurt. When I laid on my stomach, it hurt. There was no position where it felt all right. Mm -mm. But I mean, I will say like the bathroom was great. We had a little balcony. The room itself was great. Yeah. It's just the bed. <laughs> blue not getting adequate rest or sleep really kind of killed also nourishment because we were wondering the food and drink situation so well, we also didn't go to any of like their actual restaurants because i don't i wasn't sure if you had to make reservations or not we also didn't want to be on any schedule right so we were just going to like their like buffet essentially we're partially to blame but let's talk about it what do you think of the food katie i like the hot dogs great glizzies <laughs> the french fries were good the soft serve was good <laughs> Yeah, they did have a soft service, everything machine, which was amazing. Just, everything else was just kind of bland. I don't want to like, no offense. No food. offense, but it was giving like old country buffet. I don't know if anyone's ever been to one of those, but it was just like, that's what mass quantities of food are like. So I'm not totally surprised, but I was hopeful because no. we heard mixed reviews. Like some people were like, cruise food's delicious. And some people were like, eh. But I, again, were they talking about the restaurants that you go to? Because they had like a Mexican restaurant. They had a sushi restaurant. They had a steak restaurant. They had different restaurants that we just... <laughs> Blew right past. Completely blew past. So besides the food that was mid, the ship was huge, which was crazy. Like, I didn't understand how big it was going to be. It had a casino that we didn't really participate in. We played like one <laughs> slot and lost and we're like, okay, we're done here. But we knew where all the bars were. Which, you know, contributed to not only the fun, but the pain that we experienced later on, I would say. And we made friends with one of the like bartenders. He took good care of us. He'd always like come find us in the crowd and like be a new because you like gave him your key card that was like your credit card was hooked up to it and he'd be like this one's on me you and know. I was like you just want us to have a good time. And Dana finally fulfilled her greatest prophecy. My lifelong dream of crowd surfing came true. Shout out to Michelle. If she ever hears us. We met some also amazing wonderful people on this cruise. Like everyone was so nice. Everyone was so cool. That's I mean I I was like you know I I had never like desired to go on a cruise. I was like I don't know if that's for me. I don't know if that's like my scene. But this cruise appealed to me for multiple reasons. Emo music, love all the bands. And I'm like, I'm going to be amongst my people. You already have so much in common and everyone was so freaking cool. And when you go to emo night, that's how they are. So it's not surprising, right? Like they were yeah. wonderful. But yeah, you tell Michelle that you want to get something done and she is just a mover and shaker. <laughs> so I did it first at Under Oath, which was also, <sighs> I haven't seen them in so long. Under Oath was amazing. So good. And they tossed us up and I, I went belly down, which is not I, what you're supposed to be doing. The videos <laughs> that Katie got of my limbs that no longer looked like they belonged or were attached to my body were just all going every direction. Like the captain was possibly using them to understand what like northeast, what are we doing? It was such a great time. But then by yellow card the next night, I had it down pat. It was so fun. Definitely got felt up, but it was just kind of like, you know, it's been a lonely season. It's, you know occupational hazard of being a crowd surfer i wasn't mad at the but the bruises i mean i bruise easily but the bruises on my legs are definitely for that because it's also like there were a couple times when i almost got dropped we saw a girl who also told us that she had just had her gallbladder removed yeah, 10 so days prior big concern she had a black eye. she had a black eye and she was like oh i was crowd surfing and i was like didn't you just say you just had your gallbladder removed and i was like i don't know how like fundamental that is to the constitution of your body but Anyway, if she could do it, I could do it. I was like, no gallbladder. She's doing it. I have mine. Let's go. It was just so fun. Also, we've discussed in recent episodes our passion for thirst traps. And it had been a while. And oh, I was like, we trapped. Let's fuck them up. We trapped. We trapped on that beach. And it went on the main feed. Yours looked amazing. We went for a little swim in the Bahamas. But then we came out and I was like getting my 
Baywatch on with my plank body. And then I was like, you know what? SI reject. Let's go. That is the that's the mood for the day. And Katie, you got the shots. But I'd like to say that I got yours as well. Well, now I think it's time. We've given you guys the background. So I think now it's time to talk about the more salacious parts of the cruise. AG1. I first gave AG1 a try because I was tired of taking so many supplements. Like if you have to do that, you're not going to do it. And I wanted a single solution to support my entire body. I love that with just one delicious scoop of AG1, you're supporting gut health, immune health, and brain health. Also, if it tastes like lawn, you're not going to do it. And it really is easy peasy. I think it's delicious. I have felt so much more energized throughout the day since implementing AG1 into my daily routine. With AG1, I know I'm covering my basis with high quality ingredients like pre and probiotics, adaptogens, antioxidants, and whole food source nutrients. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also incredibly simple. Don't you just feel, it's like that Seth Rogen meme, like when you like eat a salad and you just feel so luxurious. <laughs> just one scoop once a day and you can mix it in your water or a smoothie. I have a smoothie in the morning, every morning for breakfast, and I've been adding it in. It just gives a little little flair. What I like to do is add a scoop to a smoothie or to like a like an ice cold glass of water. AG1 is a supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. When my sister was in town this weekend, she was like, why do you have so much of this? And I was like, buy it and go home and you're going to have just as much. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D3, K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash disrespectfully. That's drinkag1.com slash disrespectfully. Check it out. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. Jenny Kane is a California brand through and through. Their staples make getting dressed easier than it's ever been before. Think minimalistic, and effortless but totally refined from luxurious cashmere sweaters and iconic accessories to elevated versions of all your everyday basics not to mention the most incredible home essentials too as a limited time for our listeners you get 15 percent off your first order go to jennycane.com and use code disrespectfully 15 to get 15 percent off i'm truly so obsessed with jenny kane i love their cashmere sweaters my sister who normally thinks i dress like a trash can was like, what is this? This is gorgeous. I need. And I was like, oh, it's my Jenny Kane. Yeah. It's like when I take off like my like band hoodies or like my normal like zip hoodies, I put on my like fancy Jenny Kane hoodie. Mm -hmm. So I feel like an elevated queen. I obviously chronically live in leggings. It just like makes everything just a little bit more buttoned up and pulled together and totally. less goblin lifestyle. I can go out to dinner in it and not feel like I'm slumming. Mm -hmm. With me, it's always another day, another cardigan, if you know what I mean. And that's why I love the mohair boyfriend cardigan because you can dress it up or down and really wear it anywhere. I could truly live in my Jenny Kane marina sweatshirt and sweatpants. They also have shoes. Like we can't forget the shoes. The no. kitten heel is a officially back and it's she's been back we love that it is i'm obsessed with the modern suede take i personally love the blake boot and you can't forget their home essentials furniture pieces cozy pillows and throws perfectly curated decor and the most incredible candles jenny kane has an incredible rewards program where you can earn up to 10 percent back with every single purchase and joining is completely free find your new uniform at jennykane.com our listeners get 15 percent off your first order when you use code disrespectfully 15 at checkout that's 15 percent off your first order at j-e-n-n-i-k-a-y-n-e.com promo code d-i-s-r-e-s-p-e-c-t-f-u-l-l-y 15 let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about you made a joke on the way back about that you did not have your rose moment rose to whippicator no nobody 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 asked me to go bang in a what is what what is that like part of the ship where the, the cars all go possibly floor five but we I don't, don't know, know. <laughs> I don't know nobody asked me to do that no one says when the ship docks I'm getting off with you nobody fell in love with me no I didn't have that moment no one rose to it me and you know what it's fine it's okay I did have some flirts you know you had multiple flirts multiple Whatever the fuck his name was. Okay. Him and, well, 
kid is not okay well you know what i was nervous about seeing him i'll say that much and then he actually when he mentioned that he's like listened to this podcast i was like first of all i don't he think listens he listens to the podcast well he said nice shot he's like yeah it's pretty good i was like you're not listening to this podcast well if you're listening let, to this podcast right now then let's talk about him i'm gonna quiz you <laughs> but i was um a little nervous about that one because i hadn't talked to him in like literal months because i don't want to give too much context to this because i don't want to give too much attention to it okay well i'm just but saying it would mention there was, on this podcast there was a before. person that i knew was going to be there and i didn't even tell him i was going to be there and then he noticed on my story that i was packing and he asked if i was going to be there and i was like yeah damn it we had talked for some time and then he like stopped talking to me for like a really long time and then it came back around and then you know just it just wasn't wasn't right i was a little hurt i was a lot hurt but you know um i'm i'm not it's, it's like impossible for me to like be mean to this person or like hate this person or whatever so i think you handle yourself well because i don't like to be around anyone even if i'm the one who ended it with someone i don't like to be around anyone that i've ever dated in any way like i'm very like you don't exist so we were trapped in the open sea with an open wound well it's like closed <laughs> up but it is a former open wound so like yeah but it's almost like he he didn't want to acknowledge that there was a wound to begin with why would he it doesn't seem like he has those emotional exactly capabilities exactly right so eq you handle it like a champ so and you look super fucking hot which is helpful i met someone which would very much was not expecting that to happen we met him on the first night and he we just like kind of started chatting at a bar and he was like well i'm actually you know i came alone and so i was just like looking to make friends so i want to say hi which and is such a bold move such a brave thing to do but i'm like now you know emo so niche if you don't have any friends that are into it like i was when i was talking to raleigh about it i was like i would never make you go on an emo cruise because you would be absolutely miserable like if you don't like the bands you're gonna not have a good time so i didn't really think anything of it i mean when you saw him we both kind of looked at each other and we're like he's handsome the second day we had like seen him out we were having a good time kind of hung out with him on the beach and then that night we like went to a few shows and this girl came up to us and was like you guys are the cutest couple on this boat. Like I'm obsessed with you. And she had taken a photo of us like from behind, like I was just standing in front of him. Nothing was happening. And I was like, Oh no, we're just friends, whatever. Anyway, then we made out and one thing led to another. And all of a sudden it was a love boat. It was just like a nice surprise because like the place I am in my life in general is just not at all is seeking that. And that re I really mean that genuinely because I'm just doing so well. I'm just, I'm good. So unless something like really blows me out of the water, <laughs> I'm just kind of whatever about it. So long story short, he lives on the East Coast, which is a challenge. And I'm really not interested in doing long distance, but he is coming to visit me this weekend. Hell yeah. So well, that's what we love to see. We'll see about that. But I'm sure he's going to listen because I told him we were talking about Effort, this. Effort, initiative. All that's what we want. Yeah. That's all we want. So was not on my bingo card for the cruise. I mean, I was hoping for crowd surfing, but it also was like, could happen, <laughs> could not happen. We don't know. So overall, 10 out of 10 experience. I mean, I've met like some of the, the, the guys that were like playing in the bands and stuff before. And there's like such great people. So to like be around them all again was so much fun. And I was like, Wish we could do this all the time. Matt, who put it on, was so amazing for having us. And his wife is just like such oh, a peach. I can't. Do they're it. like two of the best people. Shout out to Matt. You fucking killed it. You, you killed it. It was such a great event. And also all the bands like seeing yellow. I hadn't seen yellow cards since I was like 14 years old and like. Devil Wars Prada, Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. What was your favorite? Devil Wars Prada was definitely one of my top favorites. I'd never seen them before. I, had, I hadn't either, I don't think. Um, so yeah, they were like really up there. They're just, they were really fucking incredible. I mean, I always love watching like Story of the Year and Census Fail. They're just like fun yeah. acts to watch. I love getting to watch Matt's band perform. It also had a surprising amount of like activities. There's like a tattoo artist and all these different things they did like a tonight show version like matt hosted it and had different people <laughs> from different bands and it was so goddamn funny glad we went yeah no we made like a lot of really great friends and friends we'll have for a long time and emo cruise is just different because it's like it it has the things going on that i'm interested in one of my other favorite moments from like one of the sets was when buddy from senses fail at the end of their set started to <laughs> throwing the amps off the stage and then he went for the other one and then the security came on and then they threatened to put him in cruise jail the brig cruise jail he almost went to the brig yeah is that's that what it's called yeah that's what cruise jail is called it's called the brig 
Yeah, but then like the next day, or I don't know if it was earlier that day or the next day, they let him come and like, they let him honk the like horn and drive the ship. So I'm like, so you went from the captain to like almost captive? That's sure. like pretty. Also to paint the picture, these amps were huge, huge. huge. And he gets one, he throws it off. And I was like, is this, I thought it was a bit. like He that pushes had... it over and then he gets behind it and like He's... crossfits it off. <laughs> off the stage <laughs> like those big tires and I'm just, yeah i'm just like dying when it was happening i thought it was part of the scheduled programming like it was just but it was no, no he just got he's just a frisky biscuit pushed that bad boy <laughs> off went to the other one and this guy with a mustache who like looked exactly how you think someone would get mad about an amp being thrown off the stage looked like the best part is but he's like whistle, basically. Oh yeah, bob the security guard told me i should be in jail and then he was <laughs> when sat down and fell asleep Oh, that security guard. Yes, he passed out after. Oh, my God. Speaking of the the Rose to Picator, how he loved leaning into the Titanic of it all. I mean, how could you not? Right. We had a, we had like a full like 20 minutes on our balcony of like my heart will go on. We were living our best life. We love this bit when you're trying to fall. Like people are like, hey, do you mind if I put on some white noise? It helps you fall asleep and you like turn over and like put some psychotic song on. So <laughs> me and Katie were doing that and she recorded me and then I like turned over and blasted the heart will go on and we were absolutely fucking cackling. Mm -hmm. One of our best bits today. Also, I kind of almost had another Titanic moment when I was with that gentleman. We was like, oh, I want to show you like we're going to the front of the boat. And I'm like, am I about to like this thing with the arms? I was like, what's going I'm on? I'm flying, Jack. And it, yeah, and it was nighttime. So I was like, what are we really even going to see? So we're like <laughs> going up and then I turned the corner and I got pressure washed because someone was pressure washing the front of the boat. Like <laughs> I was like, OK, Instagram versus reality. This is expectations versus reality as well. So anyway, I got a little pressure washed. Also, my favorite fucking thing, which who knows why someone put hundreds <gasps> oh. and hundreds of these tiny ducks. And I had one Triceratops, which I found all over the boat. And we don't know why. And we were by we, I mean, I were collecting them. And I have I have like 30 tiny ducks at my house right now. And I was giving them out as if they were friendship bracelets toward the end. The people that I like. So if you got a duck for me, you got a duck. I fucks with you. Well, you came back that last morning and you're like, look at what I you're like. Oh, my God, I have the best thing to show you ever. And so I was like, oh, my God, what did she got to show me? And you just like empty your pocket. And it's full of like little tiny ducks. I was like, oh, OK. Well, and then the last night, the last show, there was this security guard. And he put it's like an actual rubber ducky. And it was a soccer ball one. It was on an amp. And I like ran. I mean, mind you, we we're in the artist area, but our security was like trying to block it off. And I ran past him and I jumped on the amp and grabbed it and started running away. And one of the security guards was like, hey, that's mine. And I was like, no. And then he found me later at one of the other like shows we went to and he asked me to give it back. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I will literally never. You can take this out of my cold dead hands. I'm keeping What this. are you doing with all those? I just love them. I like look at the Triceratops is near my computer right now and I just look at it. You're probably. like such not like a tchotchke gal. So like that's really surprising. To they me. were just particularly so cute. I don't know if it was reminding me of like the simpler days when we made a beaded geckos or whatever. Yeah. I do get attached to certain inanimate objects like certain pens that I really love and whatever so I don't know but I just love them and they're so cute and anyway I think he was kind of trolling me because then he goes put your hand out and I thought he was gonna like high fiving and he put a bunch of because he had been collecting them too so oh. I liked and then I almost gave him the duck because I was like this is so sweet you he was should like, have he was like, oh, okay, okay one of my best friends back home Randy collects rubber ducks and so I'm gonna give her the soccer ball one that last day when I just decided to switch to red wine because I was like, red wine will make my body feel good, <laughs> which is a great idea, right? But the thing is, when I, when I start drinking red wine, tequila at some point, like I kind of have to stop. Like it gets to the point where I'm like, I can't drink any more tequila. Oh, if someone it'll just if someone cut us, we would bleed tequila sodas. But then I was like, I never want another tequila soda But again. then I was drinking red wine and like I literally physically wouldn't stop. We were sitting at this like bar, the bar where that one nighttime party was happening mm -hmm. that I said I wouldn't go to mm -hmm. it started happening mm -hmm. and I was like I'm still here but I was like I was like far far in the back so I was like okay well like I'm technically not here mm -hmm. I'm not there right. I'm like still here but I'm not there I like I had like two more glasses of wine there I carried I carried one of my glasses of wine up to the room with me Which I was uh, you know when you're drinking so much wine that you can start to feel your hangover coming yes when, when you're not even hungover yet that's what was happening but like you know what I couldn't feel my back hurting. Couldn't feel my like legs hurting. My calf that was like a rock. Couldn't feel that. You know, it just makes my body feel really good. <laughs> well, I also switched wine out of necessity just because I could not have any more tequila sodas. And same thing. We were both 
quite hungover. Do you know what um, wine makes me do? It makes me kind of like Twerk. really sp- spicy. I don't know. I was like, I was either like trauma dumping or like <laughs> getting really like sassy with people. So if you met me that day, I either trauma dumped on you. Or <laughs> I look at a bottle of wine and like, let's go back to 1998. Let me tell you where it all started. <laughs> A hundred percent. So we had been hanging out with the guy, not the other, the other guy. And we went up to that Haven area, you know, mm-hmm. and I went up to like the top deck and we were like taking pictures. There's a really beautiful sunset, the whole thing. He was like downstairs, whatever. I come down. So he's like, oh, I want to go up to look at the sunset. I'm like, well, we were just up there. You should have been up there with us. I, and and then I was talking to these other two people <laughs> who I just met for the first time. And they're like, oh, do you, do you know that? And I was like, oh, I used to. Yeah, I used to. And they're like, oh, it's, it's, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And then, it's like, I don't want to talk about it. We don't have to talk about it. And then I was just like, but, you know, who wants to go look at the sunset? I'm like, you know what? I am the sunset. <laughs> I'm the fucking sunset. And I like, walked off. I was trying to be better about taking videos. <laughs> I have a, literally have a video of you saying that I was just like taking a video in the room. And that's what you're just like, <laughs> I'm the fucking sunset. And then I walked away. They're probably like, huh? Put it on my tombstone. The bottle of wine is in the corner, like with its cap being like, sorry, it's me. It's not her. <laughs> I'm the fucking sunset. I'm you want to go sunset. Again? I'm the fucking sunset. So I left. It was great. 10 out of 10. So fun. Music killed Kate, especially. Yep. This is like super random. We should get into the basement. And then WWDD, but really quickly, because so many people sent it to us and I just thought it was really funny. Someone got married wearing an Apple Vision Pro. Oh, I know. So many people sent it to us and we posted it. We're like, yeah, guys, we saw and we're and the with the wife's like face looks disgusted. I'm like, I'm telling you, that man walks out trying to do that. We are getting divorced. I once saw a huge photo that was like all these guys that are clearly like frat guys and this wife, and they had the big sign. They're like, we get married on a Friday because Saturdays are for the boys. And it was that is the kind of energy he was giving. I was like, I would have said no. I would have been like, bye. What does someone say? Like, oh, he's definitely like watching Brazzers. <laughs> well, he, yeah, he was like, he had the photo. He's like, and had his fingers up. I'm like, ma'am, why did you do that? You were saying you're not sure about the authenticity. I think it was real. I can't imagine any woman that would go along was, with that for clicks. For her sake, I just wanted it to not be real. <laughs> A living, breathing nightmare. For womankind, I wanted this to not be real. He puts on the monster eyes. And he's like, <laughs> in sickness and in health. To death, death do us part. <laughs> yeah, that was really hard for me to watch. Really hard for me to see. Okay, so who's in your basement, that guy? No, I have a much better one in my basement this week. Who? I was just friendly ghosted. Mm. And I think we all know how I feel about younger men specifically. Like, it's just not really my thing. And I made that clear. So it was never that deep. We just like hung out for a few weeks and I... Gave it a chance, but really know where it was going. But we were talking constantly, 24-7, up into the boat. And then when we when we flew into Miami, the first night I said to you, I was like, I haven't heard from him. That's so weird. And then I did, but it was just like, hope your flight was good. And, I, you know, women are just so intuitive, you know. And people, friends around me will always try and tell me that I'm not being ghosted, but I'm, I just know my bones. I'm like, yeah, no, I am. Here's the thing. It wasn't that deep. Me and him were never going to date, but we did have plans like coming back from this week. And I'm fine with it. Like, obviously, it all worked out how it's supposed to. But I'm sorry. Friendly ghosts. Every single fucking one of you get in my basement that has Mm -hmm. ever lived, that has ever done it to another person. I need a cemetery down there and goodbye. (laughs) Like, be a grown up and just say, I no longer want to see you to literally. Not for me. Yeah, it's, It's different. We talked about this like. If it's a date, that's fine. One day, yeah, you don't owe anyone anything. But if you have been hanging out, going to dinner, partying on weekends, sleeping together, like uh, something is owed. So friendly ghost of the week in my basement. I don't really have anyone in my basement. I know. I think your kidney infection should go in the basement. Oh, yeah. My kidney can go in the basement. That could My bladder and my kidney, my organs can all go in the fucking basement. You're failing me. I try to take care of you. Maybe it's because we didn't drink like water at all. This week. Oh, sink water. The sink water on the cruise. I'm in my own basement for making this decision. This is so true. <laughs> okay, so we landed the we're in the Miami airport. We fly in and I see this girl filling her water bottle and in she's the like, bathroom Ew. sink. And I was like, I'm disgusted. That girl's drinking a sink. Like there must be water filling stations. Cut forward to night three on the cruise. 
I am parched. I am. I one night I would set an alarm for an hour. I went to bed at seven and I woke up at almost 10. And I was like, fuck, like I missed the night, but I'm also hungover. And I needed water so bad. But again, it's a big ship. So like the water filling area was so far away. And I was like, fuck it. And I just filled up a cup a thousand times with cruise line sink water. You didn't tell me filled it up a thousand. How many? How many? Oh, oh, I had six or seven cups of sink water. <laughs> And when I tell you, like, I am invincible. I glow at night. <laughs> not sure if that's ever going to go away. I, I dare COVID to try and infect me now. Like, I, I was like... It's like, a good thing you're on steroids. I'm Do you like, want some of my antibiotics? No, I'm like, no man is ever going to hurt me again. I've had cruise lines in water. <laughs> you think you can hurt me? I drink out of a sink on a cruise, okay? Mm, that mm -hmm. is disgusting. I am so horrified that I did that. I was convinced I was going to get sick. I didn't. Well, you counteracted it with the tequila, I think. I did. But anyway, if anyone's out there and has any opinions, if you know, I didn't want, I almost googed, but I didn't because I didn't want to know. Like I had, I had already drank it. So it was like, you were pretty disgusted at you, me when I told you that information. Yeah. I just can't imagine that there's much of a filtration system on that. No, no. Oh, How, and did it taste? It tasted like w desperate water. Like, <laughs> like, you know how like there's like Fiji water and Dasani. Dasani? Dasani oh, it was is worse than Dasani. Ugh, no, it, but it was like why didn't you desperate? Why didn't so, you call the room service people and order? I think water. it's before we got room service. I just didn't know. You did. The next morning, you got all those water bottles, and I was like, <laughs> okay. So I had options. It would appear, but you know what? <laughs> Stronger, better, faster, hotter. So that's that on that. I will say when we walked into that bathroom on the first day before we had used the shower, I was like peeing, and I saw it. And it came out. And I was like. There is a Samara style, <laughs> yes. eight foot long, dark brown hair, like hanging from the thing you hold on to in the shower. So I drink water adjacent to that hair <laughs> is all I have to say. But anyway, write in, let us know if that, I am completely that. fucked. Should we do WWDD? Yeah, I guess, I guess we should. I guess I'm in my own basement too, but. Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love. Whether you're a bride, a wedding guest, or simply seeking everyday smoothing, Honey Love is go-to for all things shapewear. Honey Love has revolutionized compression technology so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating while wearing effective shapewear. Plus, they won't ever roll down no matter how much you groove on the dance floor. Honey Love shapewear features lingerie-inspired design details that you'll want to show off and is made with breathable fabric that keeps you nice and cool. For a limited time only, you can get 20% off your entire order with the exclusive link honeylove.com slash disrespectfully. Support our show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash disrespectfully. I've truly always hated shapewear. I'm not going to lie. And I would used to dread like going to like fancy events because I would have to just like suffocate all night in some uncomfortable like random shapewear. But Honey Love has changed the game for me. It's not only way more comfortable, but I feel very confident wearing it. Honey Love's best-selling superpower short is my go-to. It has targeted compressions, so it will give you even more support where you want the extra sculpt without squeezing your natural curves. So it's really working with your body opposed to against it. And another thing I hate is when it rolls down, when the shapewear rolls down. So all night you're like having to like pinch it up underneath your dress or over your dress. And it's just hate, 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 hate. double hate, loathe entirely. Yeah. Thanks to the flexible boning hidden inside the seams of the super power short, you don't have to worry about them rolling down. And as an added bonus, boost bands on the back of the thigh give your booty in amazing shape. The shorts are also 100% organic. You don't have to even wear underwear and it's got an opening you know where so you don't have to take them off when you have to pee. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash disrespectfully. Use our exclusive link and get 20% off honeylove.com slash disrespectfully. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you Move with confidence, thanks to Honey Love. Melissa says, loving everything you are dishing out and look forward to hearing what you have to say every week. I've been on my own personal journey for a couple years now, reprogramming 40 years of beliefs that don't serve me, and I've reached the stage of anger about everything everyone has ever done to me. From being picked on in school to friends' betrayal, relationships that tore me apart, it's spilling into everything, and the fact that things aren't the best in the world today, it's feeding it. Any advice on how to navigate through and let go of anger? Trying to live my best life, Melissa. I am a very angry elf by nature. It's like my baseline. So I 
I have a good amount to say on this. One thing that I always personally try to live by, it's resentment is like drinking the poison and expecting the other person to die. Mm -hmm. So it, honestly, one of the most difficult things I've had to deal with in my life is getting over certain people who have hurt me. And, you know, a lot of times it makes it feel even more difficult when people aren't sorry. And that's another layer to it. I'm not sure if she's experienced that. I'm guessing so. So I don't think there's any quick remedy. It's Anger has been the most difficult. I've had a lot of sadness in my life and anger is way harder to work through and move on from. And it's really easy to have a chip on your shoulder. But once you're free of it, it's like a thousand pound weight. Yeah, I mean, go of. I think everyone has different practices that best would suit them, um, whether it's like physical practices like exercise or meditative things like yoga, whatever you can do to kind of channel that to like get it out or out of you or whether it's writing or whether it's creative or something. Rage I think, room. I think some kind of like channel channeling it somehow, I think is the best way to do it. Remember when Regina George picked up rugby? <laughs> yeah. Like, lacrosse. Oh, lacrosse. Excuse me. Yeah. There's other, there's all kinds of options, but you just try and give yourself grace and do something to be proactive about it. And also if like You've never done therapy, therapy and it yeah. would be helpful for you. My therapist has helped me a lot and it's just much easier for yourself in life to. And also you will carry this shit over into other platonic relationships, romantic other patterns if you don't let go of it. So, yeah, I mean, I think therapy is a given, but I also think physical something like to channel. I don't know because it's still going to fester. It's like an energy that needs to go. Next one. Ali says, love the pod, and I know your perspectives are just what I need right now. My boyfriend broke up with me a week after we spent the holidays with his family on the East Coast for 10 days. The trip was amazing, and I thought it was a big step. But now I realize he was checked out the whole time. The week after the trip was our two-year anniversary, where he dumped me after a nice night celebrating. How to start moving on? Well, that is quite the mindfuck. The best thing to do is not focus on, like, what you thought it was or what you thought this person was and realize that they were not the one for you. I mean, if you can go and have this wonderful time and think it's this big, nice step and then he can just like up and leave. I think he did you a favor. Did you a big favor? Also, after we were just speaking on anger and like letting it go, woosah, fuck this guy, Allie, first of all. Yeah. It's also anger is appropriate sometimes. Like there are times for it. And when you're first moving through a grieving process, a let yourself be mad at him. That is I have been broken up with before when we had like it was like a three year relationship and it was like one of the best days we had had in a long time. And he unexpectedly broke up with me that night. And it's a really bad feeling because you're like, well, wait, things were so great. But I'm guessing if you look back overall, things were probably not great and there probably were signs and it'll make you better in the future for being able to, you know, maybe yeah. see some of that. But it is shitty when, yeah, you had a holiday, it's your anniversary, and he just dumps you unexpectedly. Well, a lot of people will do this thing where, like, I mean, she's looking, the sign is that he was checked out, but, like, a lot of people will, like, wait till after a holiday or a trip or an anniversary because they don't want to, like, ruin those, like, moments or those times or, like, they'll want to break up with somebody on a high. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, like, a really messed up thing to do, but it's, like, in their mind, they think that's, like, letting someone down softly. Yeah. And it's just it's really not. Yeah. I mean, like you said, the like you'll be in your head about that. But how to start moving on, go through the grieving process. It's definitely going to be part of it. Start focusing on yourself. Start focusing on yourself. Take the lessons that you need to and give yourself time before you start dating again. And like, don't just try to plug someone in like. Yeah, no, definitely. I would not say, you know, don't jump into something else. Yeah. You don't want to transfer that. But, you know, I would not dwell or try to like ruminate on this at all you know tears is a long time so I would also say you start healing by just literally getting up every day also it's unfortunate but like time really does heal all wounds so it'll just keep getting easier so please try and remember that when it sucks so bad and it really really hurts because those really it just like can take you out there will be a time that you're just going to wake up one day in a few months and be like Oh, I'm good. It does. It's like every day gets better. But he's a real dick, Allie. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Fuck him. Justine mm -hmm. says, big fan. Love your pod. I am not certain if this is the kind of story in question is applicable, but I really thought you guys would get a kick out of it. Poop in the hands. One time I was a few weeks into dating a guy on a very late night. He started telling me how great I am, how great my friends are and how he could see us going the distance, how he can see himself pooping in my hands. What? <laughs> 
<laughs> I said immediately thinking I heard him wrong. I just think that we have a great connection, you know, and I can poop in your hands. Um, no, I don't feel that way. I don't want you to poop in my hands. Will I be seeing you again? No, sorry. Mind you, I don't want to kink shame. We just didn't have the same kink language. I draw the line with excrements. Also, I was really not interested in that guy. This was just a note for me. I ask you, what is your kink language and what is your note? Cheers, Justine. P.S. Would love it if you did any listener write in dating stories for the episodes. I have way too many to share. I would say in addition to WWDD, if you have any stories you think we just need to hear, oh my, I think that would be a great oh addition. Oh my God. Yeah. We'd love to read your stories. Send us, send us your, your mm. disasters, anything you think is interesting, please do. Okay. Well, I would say I don't want my hands be pooped mm. in either. So I think that that would be Yeah. I mean, if you're into no scat, me. go for it, but like not for me either. What is your kink language? I don't, um, <sighs> well, I mean. Here's the thing. And I'm also I love that she used she doesn't want a kink shame because I love that everyone does like different For things. Sure. Yeah, and also you have to really love someone to let them just, you know, um, it's really dark stuff. I have I'm I would just say that I speak several kink languages and I'm fluent, but I don't I don't want to give TMI like I have several <clears throat> kinks. Don't we yeah. all? Justine, like I love the question, but I think. That's where I'm gonna have to leave it. What's yours? Mm. Unless there's anything well, you'd like. If to If you're not sharing, I'm not sharing. I mean, I'm like, I'm trying to think of one that's more innocent. That's like silly goose behavior. <laughs> what is your nope? Besides, okay, poop then stuff? yeah, I would say I share in Justine's nope. That would be a nope. We have talked about this. How like there are certain, and this not to generalize is more with men that you can tell watch like scary kind of violent porn like people who act on that or like want mm -hmm. like that that's their king that would be a note for me and it's not saying there aren't times where i think it's like fun to be more rough or whatever but like that needs to be a very consensual mutual what do you decision mean, like, violent like yeah getting punched in the face yeah i'm like that's not <laughs> what about like slap where lightly on your face i mean yeah with the right person i would say i'd be down with that but not someone like what if someone's pissing in your mouth yeah okay the right there you go could you have someone spit in your mouth? Fuck yeah. Yeah, I'd spit in someone's okay, mouth Okay, then too. that's what we're giving away. Okay, that's okay. That's that's fair. So we'll go with spitting in the mouth. I don't know what my nope, what a nope would be. Um, I think anything that's like too corny or like too like tropey. I don't know. Another nope of mine is people who try to fall asleep in the spooning position. That's, that's a lot <laughs> less like kinky. That's a lot less kinky. No, people that like ask like too many questions. Or, I have like a fucking <laughs> sleeping disorder. Let's be realistic about this. I also have a king size bed. Please go to your area when we are. I'm like, good night. We're done with this. I can't, can't do it. I don't know. That's some people's. So far, I guess I haven't really encountered anything that was a big nope. <laughs> Same. <laughs> okay. Would you ever let anyone pee on you? <laughs> Where? Like in the shower? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Well, yeah, just in general. Well, that's not it. Okay. Then not... you. Honey. Would you? Mm. In the shower? Like it's like. People do that all the time for jelly fish stings. No, this is because they, this is like, something well, no, I'm, as, I know that it's a kink, but like if I had, if you were stung by a jellyfish, would you let someone pee on you? Probably. And it's like the cleanest thing well, yeah, that comes out of the human I body. Need, okay. Anyways, moving on. Fine. She stands Okay. Alone. Emily says, how do you know it's time to get a divorce? I feel like I'm losing myself to put someone else before myself. And my husband is not doing the same. When the highs are high, it's amazing, but I'm starting to feel lost and lonely help. I know that feeling. And like, listen, I know like marriage is work, but it shouldn't feel like this like grueling, gr like just tiresome work. It should feel like this like really great, like effortful, like wonderful thing that you guys are building together. It should be like this like choice that you're making every single day to love each other. But when you feel like you're the only one in it and you're putting some before you and that person doesn't choose you ever, that's like really disappointing. That's really a much so much of a letdown. And that's when you start to look at yourself and you go, is this the life that I want? Is this the future I want? Is this the marriage that I want? Do I want to keep choosing somebody that never chooses me? And I think when you start asking yourself those questions and it starts to creep up, it doesn't usually stop. So I think, I mean, it's, it's a really big decision to make. But for me, it's like, that that it didn't really stop creeping up for me of the people in my life that have gotten divorces I don't know any of them that regret it so it is a big decision to make but like 
if that continues to keep coming up for you, there's probably a reason. I actually just saw this TikTok trend recently where this girl was like, if you're a married couple, please stitch this or, or you're part of a married couple and say what you mean when you say marriage is supposed to be hard. And a, a bunch that. of people have stitched it and they basically were saying like, of course, any relationship takes work and effort, but it's not hard if you like each other. Like you have to like each other. There, yeah, life is hard. There's moments you move through that are different seasons that are going to be more stressful, obviously, and constrain a relationship. But if you are constantly feeling high highs and low lows and you're looking for more consistency and stability, then it might not be the right partner for you. Well, yeah, because in order to keep your relationship solid and you're and you're to to have that bond go deeper with one another, you have to like that requires work on both ends. Mm -hmm. It's it's not just like something that just happens on its own. It's not just like a gift that's given. Love is not a noun. It's a it's a verb. Something that you do. That's so true. Also, if you're if you are feeling this way and like doesn't mean you just have to give up one day and come home and be like, I want a divorce. I'm not sure if you've actually had these conversations with your partner, but also that's important. I think to be able to like say, hey, yeah. this is where I'm getting. So this is yeah. what I need to happen or I'm not going to be able to do this. I, I would be curious to know if you've like kind of told them like where your head's at. Because sometimes if they, they don't if they don't know and if you've already kind of put it out there that like, you're not happy and you want to see more action from them and you want to see them get involved, you know, I think you got to be vocal. Pamela says sex number. Is your sex number important? Specifically, is it anyone's business that you are dating? Why is it so important to some people? Is they're immature? This is a product of the patriarchy. It's, it's so stupid. I mean, we've discussed this in terms of the way that for men, you're it's a positive thing. You know, you're looked at as a playboy and someone who knows how to get what they want and whatever. And it doesn't matter. No. And I don't know any woman that's in my life, at least that's ever asked a partner, like, how many people have you slept with? And like that thought has never occurred to me, whether it's been a man or a woman, I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. What I what I care about is sexual health and like making sure that people are taking care of themselves and getting tested and whatever, like you're using protection. But like other than that, not my business. I It doesn't devalue you. It doesn't change you. It doesn't why it's important to some people. I think that also a lot of times men who it is important to want this trope of this. It's like the Madonna whore, like this mm -hmm. virginal wife. But then they end up like cheating on their wives because they want someone who fulfills this like sexual part of them. So I don't know. Ask these bozos. I think it's a very like antiquated thing of like it being like they want something that's virginal and pure. That's like theirs. But yeah, then they want the other. Yeah. Thing too. They want someone that can sit on and spin. I don't know. <laughs> I just think that it's so stupid but like we said i've had i've only had one person ask me that in like my adult life and it was just like excuse me i have, I have never had anyone ask me i would never say i'd be like that would be that would be an ick or a red flag i'd be like nah. that was one of the ones i looked back and i was like mm, what were you thinking i shouldn't have continued seeing him like why does it matter but to each their own and if that's something that makes you feel icky if someone asks that or makes you feel some kind of way please don't date them it's not it's also going to be an indication of many other toxic behaviors, I'm guessing. So, yeah, if you sure. don't mind and you're like. Whatever that number may be and you feel comfortable and it, it makes you feel good. Great. But if not, see ya next mm. or say, say the number. Mm. like Yes. And say that shit with your chest. I can't sing in mm. normal life. My voice. Anyway, we should stop this immediately. I hope we don't have any more hospital visits. <laughs> before our next episode but the week is young i hope we're on the mend onto a healthier <laughs> life now jesus bon voyage bitch <clears throat> bon voyage babe you're gonna see the power of women like disrespectfully 